Hey everyone and welcome back to another video. Uh, this video is going to be another should you pull video uh, which is for the um, thousand headed arsenal um, special banner that we have going on right now. Uh, video is a bit late apologies but uh, we still have quite a few days but uh, uh, before the uh, banner expires. Um, so this Banner obviously is going to feature six star CUB um, as the uh, main uh, operator in this banner. Uh, you don't see any of the other operators, but there are two other operators that are getting rated up, and those are five stars Lapland and um, Lazy or Lazy. I'm probably butchering up names, uh, but I've also been butchering them up for a long time, so uh, you guys have already uh, gotten accustomed to that. Uh, so let's start with. I guess Lapland, uh, since I don't have um, Lapland on this account, uh, she falls into the AoE ranged guard operator. Um, and basically that's the same, uh, sorry, not AoE, she falls into the ranged guard operator archetype. Uh, that's the same archetype as Silver Ash. Uh, she's actually a pretty solid unit, uh, one that I do recommend rolling for. Uh, she has a special uh, talent that allows her to silence an enemy. Uh, very useful against uh, certain types of enemies, particularly, for example, in uh, like 4, uh, chapter 4 on, you'll start to see enemies like these uh, uh, slugs. Uh, her silence prevents them from erupting, which is very, very useful. Uh, and you'll see these enemies as well in uh, chapter 6 as well. Uh, so her talent is quite good, uh, very much worth investing into. Even if you have Silver Ash, I would say rolling for Lapland is definitely worth it. Uh, going on to uh, the second uh, member of this archetype, I actually did get her. She was my guaranteed five star. I haven't really leveled her up, but she's actually a brand new archetype, um, sort of a chain caster archetype, which I discussed in my previous should, um, Arc Knights class guide, which uh, did involve the caster class. Um, but really briefly, she's basically a hybrid of the previous, like other two main archetypes, which were the single target and the AOE archetype. Uh, she's got some solid aspects about her. I mean, her her chain damage being able to extend uh, further than regular AoE's um, characters is pretty nice. Uh, the uh, brief snare is pretty solid uh, for um, certain um, instances where you aren't blocking enemies. So like it, she's particularly solid in it in a like full range comp where you aren't really going to be blocking enemies. Um, you don't really have to like specifically use that that type of composition very often that mainly might only come uh during specific um uh contingency contract challenges but nonetheless it's there um her second skill uh is actually nice since it reduces um it prevents the the chain damage from dealing reduced damage and her talent also aids in that um unblock uh zero block uh strategies um, so that's pretty solid. Uh, that said, if you watch that other video, you'll notice, you'll remember that I said, uh, the archetype isn't really all that, uh, all that of a requirement. Uh, it's kind of niche and so is, uh, this particular operator as well. So honestly, I would not really recommend rolling for, for her, uh, in particular. Um, and obviously the last one we have here is our six star COB. Uh, so she falls into the single target um, uh, caster archetype. So the same target as Amia and her other six star counterpart, Age of Dala. Um, compared to other casters, I feel like she really, within the archetype, I feel like she really doubles down on the single target archetype. Um, like, yeah, she really uh, doubles down on that niche, mainly with her talent, um, right? So her talent uh, provides her with additional arts damage uh, based off of 40% of the enemy's defense. That's obviously, like, really good. One of the reasons you're mainly going to be using casters is because of their arts damage and their ability to deal with high defense targets. 
And with this talent of hers, she's basically just dealing even more damage to high defense targets. Uh, so that's obviously really, really good. Lone Journey is kind of whatever. Um, it's just some nice stat boots for not having uh, allies in the four surrounding tiles. Um, you may or may not take advantage of that uh, depending on, on like the map. Uh, but that first talent, really, really good. Um, a phenomenal talent for uh, mowing down high defense targets, particularly with her second skill here, which reduces her attack interval and prioritizes high defense enemies. That's just um, phenomenal. She can really shred through high defense enemies when uh, really hot knives is active, thanks to her, her talent. Uh, her first one does is pretty short and adds a little bit of a bind, also prioritizing non-blocked enemies. Uh, this won't be as good in terms of taking out high defense enemies just because she doesn't get the prioritization on them. Uh, but giving them that binding does help with, again, uh, instances where you're, you don't want to block certain enemies. So like certain instances where you might need to stall a target uh, or instances where, again, you're running like a composition that isn't uh, blocking any enemies. Her third skill is pretty unique as well. It turns her damage into physical damage and then she prioritizes enemies with the lowest defense. Uh, this can actually help her with like fighting uh, casters. The silence is also of course really good, um, just disabling abilities like, with, like what Laplin does with her attacks. Um, it's a nice bonus, but honestly I think the third skill is kind of uh, not as useful as uh, her second skill overall uh just because uh with her her first with her third skill while she will be able to like deal physical damage and she does start attacking low defense targets uh her passive her talent still um is going to deal additional arts damage based on enemies defense uh so with this skill she's kind of like diminishing the value of her first talent which in my opinion kind of sucks um yeah, because I mean, you you really want to. I, I think you really do. I really do think this passive talent is really good, and I think you really should take advantage of it. Um, so, for that reason, I'm not a particularly like, super big fan of her third skill, but there is some value there. Just, um, you know, having a caster that can deal uh, physical damage and silence targets is uh, something that is unique to her. Uh, and that's, like, you know, obviously something that's good. It also while taking a long time um, to charge up the skill lasts for really long, which is nice. Um, regarding whether or not you should vote specific, uh, roll specifically for COB or not, I think the answer here is it depends. Um, I would say that overall, the other six star caster, Age of Dala, um, is generally in most cases going to be the better single target caster, uh, just because her second and third skills um, pretty much turn her into an AoE caster, but still let her keep all of the advantages of a single target caster, uh, namely the higher attack and the lower DP cost. And that is something that is basically, lets her transcend her archetype, uh, something that you can't really get um, from COB. Um, I mean, I guess the physical damage kind of does transcend her archetype, but like not in any way like meaningful the way Age of Jalos does. Uh, so I would say overall, Age of Jala is the superior single target caster. Obviously not in like specific situations that where COB gets to shine like high defense uh, targets. Um, but yeah, I would say uh, Age of Jala over COB in most cases. So if you do happen to have uh, the other six star uh, caster, I would say you can kind of skip on COB. I don't think she's going to offer up enough uh, in terms of uh, like benefits to your team uh, that uh, Age of Jala like isn't able to hold uh, on her own. Uh, yeah, so you know I wouldn't really wish uh, wouldn't really waste all of your currency on the uh, on this character. Um, however, if you don't have Age of Jala, um, things start to change uh, because now your best caster is likely Amia. And Amiya is certainly good in her own right. She, her first skill giving her attack speed uh, certainly helps her with her single target duties. And her last skill also ignoring like defense and whatnot uh, does have some like value. But I think uh, COB does offer a more consistent uh, single target damage experience. And yeah, if you don't have Age of Dala, then I think COB, rolling for COB, uh, you know, is something that you really much should consider.
So, overall, in my opinion, I think a spanner is kind of a maybe. Um, Lapland, I think, is very much worth it, uh, regardless of whether or not you have Silver Ash. I think her her silence is overall uh, one of the best in the game, uh, particularly at E2. It lasts really, really long, and she's a like really good unit uh, with her second skill also letting her do arts damage, uh, which is nice. Um, uh, the five star caster Leslie, I'd say you'd skip on, and Siobi, I think, is conditional. Um, so if you don't have Age of Dalla, I would say, yeah, I think this banner is decent enough for you to roll on because you have Laplin and COB to go for. If you do have Age of Dalla, um, then you're probably skipping on COB, you're probably skipping on uh, Leslie here or whatever her name is, in which case Laplin is pretty much the only one you're going for. Uh, in those cases, I would say just roll until you get your five star and hope that it is Lapland. Um, but that pretty much does it for this video uh, and the next time we'll probably be going back to our uh, class guides um, so i hope to see everyone then